So to recap, the championships of the competition, um, drivers and hand handlers can show multiple entries. There's a 25% score for the four different parts, the first being the in-hand evaluation, the second being the dressage uh, portion, the cross-country marathon portion, and then the cones and obstacle phase. Um, all the scores will be tallied in a percentage basis. Um, if there's a tie for the champion or the reserve champion, um, the tie will be broken either by um, the judge will drive those horses or there will be a designated driver or tiebreaker. Um, an elimination from any of the um, competitions before, with per permission from the ground jury, you can carry on and continue to do uh, the remainder of the championship. So um, we'll go on to phase number one, the in hand evaluation. Uh, entries are shown on a, a triangle pattern accord in accordance with USDF and USEF sport horse rules. So the important thing here that will be evaluated by the judges is the type. Is this type suitable for driving? Uh, things that uh, personally uh, I think are important, the horse should be uphill. Um, in its nature, should have a, a strong hind end and a good motor from behind, um, an attractive horse to look at, um, are attributes that all make up a, a good driving horse um, in hand. And of course, we want to see a good walk that has the capability of stepping over their front footprint at least one, um, one step and then a, a trot that comes from behind and covers ground. There are many trots that are suitable. So, uh, you know, horses that are very flat, sort of daisy cutter movers are very appropriate in driving and also horses that live, uh, move with a, uh, quite a bit of knee. Um, but it is important for the dressage phase uh, when this is being judged that we take into consideration that there are three trots at the, end, uh, at the end of the sport, which is what we're trying to develop horses for, that are important. So you need a horse that has a clear extended trot, a clear working trot, and the ability to have a collected trot. And in the walk, um, at the high levels of the sport, there's only a walk on a, uh, with a light contact or a loose rein, so it's important um, that the, the horses have the ability to cover ground and, and to step over at the walk, like I discussed before. This phase will um, be evaluated uh, and will end up being 25% of the total, um, the total score. So on to the next phase, the driven dressage phase of the competition. Um, this is uh, to be done during the championships in a 100 by 40 meter arena for um, four and five year olds. It's FEI test number one, which is a, um, a test that has um, a lengthened trot, not an extended trot, um, and has um, a working trot as well in the test and a walk, a halt and a rein back. Um, so I think we can, uh, and then for six-year-olds, we'll, uh, uh, they'll show FEI test number nine, which uh, encompasses basically all of it. So they'll have to have a, a collected trot, a working trot, an extended trot, um, and then a walk, uh, halt, rein back as well, and then also uh, canter on the right and left lead uh, with a, a change through the trot uh, gate. Um, the, the dressage will be judged in accordance with the USEF rules, and half points can be awarded, and the dressage score will, in the end, uh, total 25%. So I believe we have uh, two videos to show now. If we can start with the uh, first one, which is a um, uh, an exhibit of FEI test number one. So um, if we watch uh, this horse's dressage test, you can see that this horse is free in the shoulder, um, round, seems to stand still at the halt. So if I were judging this horse as a four or five year old, I really wouldn't have much default there, um, to be honest. I have a question if I was the C judge, if this horse is you know, wanting to tick a little bit behind the vertical um, in the neck. Harder to see when they're coming on straight at you. This would be a nice uh, working trot to me. And I think this horse sort of exhibits what you'd like to see from a young horse. 
When he turns left, there's a bend through the whole body to the left. When he turns right, there's a bend through the whole body to the right. You see that the driver can work with the whip. To the riding people in the crowd, uh, the whip in driving is similar to the leg in riding. So it's very important that the horse accepts, um, accepts the aids, which are not only the, uh, the whip and the, the hand, but also the voice. It's important to me as well, if you uh, watch this horse's gait, that the uh, hind foot path lands in the, same, um, um, in the same path as the front foot, so that they're not, out, they're not with the haunches either in or out in the turns. Um, and I think the quality of schooling is shown by the driver's ability to uh, be accurate in the test as well. We all um, know from previous experience that if we're, um, we all know from previous experience, if the horse is not very well schooled, it's very hard to uh, compete and, and to drive an accurate test. I would certainly, um, I think it's important that we're um, complementary of horses uh, in, the, in the judging and evaluation. Um, if I had to fault this horse, I could say that the walk seems a little bit rushed. Um, and I would like there to be uh, some more, uh, uh, I'd like the horse to step over a bit more behind. I like that the horse uh, is able to walk on a loose rein and seems to n not be anxious about that. Um, with that said, I think we can move on to the next video. The next video we'll look at is probably the, um, the best representation I've ever seen of test number nine. And um, as we've learned from our German counterparts, um, it's always important to um, to look at the uh, look at a test from uh, in a, in a positive light. So uh, I've chosen here to use what I think is probably the the best example of test number nine that's been executed. Um, again, this is not a six-year-old horse, but I think it's unique because it also shows some faults um, in the video of basic schooling in a horse that even though this horse uh, was older than six, I think it was eight at this time, um, you can also see that the, um, this movement is collected. Um, to me, it might be just a tick rushed, but you can see the horse has suspension, um, moving free through its shoulder. The frame is correct. He'll come out of this corner and then there'll be an extended trot. You can see a clear transition, which is really important um, for horses that get to the highest levels. Um, in the driving sport. He drove perfectly over X. That shows some drivability and accuracy. The bend remained correct. I'm really enthusiastic about this horse's suspension. This is again back to sort of a, uh, a collected trot. And in this test, you can see that there's a, there's a figure eight, uh, which would be a 20 meter right hand circle followed by a 15 meter left handed circle with one hand. That uh, should exhibit for six year old horses their correct, correctness in bending and their drivability. That somebody has actually spent the time uh, and effort to get the education of the horse um, correct and it's, it's not, uh, you know, auction ready and uh, exciting to look at, but uh, in, impossible to, to actually drive. So I think that gives you a little bit of insight into the dressage portion um, and what we'd be looking for, or hoping for from a uh, fantastic, brilliant six-year-old and, uh, and a four-year-old. So you can see this horse uh, uh, has picked up the canner on the left lead, which is correct, we come to X. Go back to the trot. This is a collected trot, 15 meters, half circle uh, to the right, and then you'll see the canter de departure on the, uh, on the right lead that again becomes correct. Horse not sticking his head up, not doing anything, just uh, coming off the aids and uh, going to the canter perfectly without uh, um, any issue. Again, all of this is, uh, in my opinion, appropriate to be able to be to be able to, to be asked of a of a six year old. It's just that they 
uh, and if they start with the correct material, they should have uh, these trot gates from nature, and uh, they just need the nurture to, to create the bending and suppleness. Um, with that said, I think we can move on to the, to the next portion. So the next portion um, is uh, the obstacle driving or cross country phase of the test. Uh, it needs to include one water obstacle with four gates, A, B, C, D, um, and E in each obstacle. This will be judged in a different sort of fashion. 50% of the score will be based on, um, on the objective criteria of them uh, just based on their speed. So 50% of the score will be given on the obstacle phase. That'll be based on the penalties and ob obstacles and the total uh, portion of the, the, for the event score would be a quarter. So this obstacle uh, represents one uh, that uh, I would think that would be very important. It's a sort of a natural, more sort of terrain oriented obstacle showing that horses are willing to um, uh, go up and down hills. This horse is, uh, stays nice in a nice frame, continues to go forward for its driver. Uh, when there's a question asked, seems to wait. You'll see here, he'll go up the hill. And then um, he's having some trouble there as a young horse might as they come up a steep hill. Um, but as he goes down the hill, he continues to wait and try and figure out what the, what the driver wants. I like also that the horse, if you watch him as the reins were changing, the canter was also changing of the horse. Um, all of those things are, uh, make the horse uh, um, uh, show suitability for continuing to be, um, uh, have the potential to be a horse for the, for the top of the sport. Here you can see a horse um, that uh, if I talk about suitability for the top of the sport, I would be uh, a little bit anxious. The canter seems to go nowhere. I think this horse, if you, if you watch it when it canters, it really goes no faster than it trots. It seems to lack balance in the turns as well, um, and sometimes it loses rhythm. And um, uh, also the, the frame of the horse, having its nose sort of poked out um, and having its head up in the air certainly is not going to help uh, its gait uh, uh, get extended and uh, show its, its suitability of, a, of being a good young horse. So here's a horse that certainly canters more forward. I like how it always looks the direction that it's going in the turns. As things get more technical, the horse slows down by itself, and then as uh, things get more open, um, it seems to go more forward. You see that the driver doesn't have to uh, continue to use the whip to make it go forward. Um, it sort of sees the opportunity to go forward and does that in a willing manner, either with a voice. Again, I, if I had to be critical of the canter there, I would say that the canter needs uh, to be a bit more ground covering. Um, this is an example of a pony um, that seems to be um, uh, you know, positive with the ears um, and forward. This might be very appropriate for a, um, a young four-year-old to see at a championship level. Um, but I think if you, uh, there seems to be some more confusion from the pony about where it's going, has some rhythm issues, um, and uh, whether that, uh, that there is an example of the driver not being exactly clear with the pony where it wants to go. Um, or if it's, um, uh, you know, a lack of drivability, certainly in the, um, in the breakdown of, uh, of the style points, uh, that, will be, um, that will be addressed. So with, uh, with regard to the obstacle penalties, uh, there'll be uh, 0.2 penalties converted to seconds for each uh, second they're in the, in the obstacles. Um, and then there'll be uh, additionally pe penalties assessed for things like uh, overturning or dismounting, uh, time penalties, um, and error penalties in the obstacles will be totaled, and then the placing will be based on the fewest number of penalties incurred, and then uh, for the first place in the, uh, on a time basis will be uh, awarded 10 points, eight points to the second place, 
uh, six points to the third place, fourth place, four points, and then two points to all the other ones that complete the phase. And uh, you can roll that video, it's no problem. And then uh, if they either were eliminated or um, for some reason didn't complete the competition, they'll, they'll receive zero points. Here you see a horse that might be more appropriate to be uh, for sort of a six-year-old. You see them continuing to want to go forward. This horse is able to compress the canter uh, even in sort of a more technical uh, environment, which certainly is advantageous when thinking about developing uh, horses so that they're not continuing to go back and forth from the trot to the canter and the trot to the canter. Um, with that said, um, Things that will be judged um, in a, a subjective manner are the temperament. Certainly we've uh, looked at some examples today of uh, from the timid sort of pony to the, to the last one here we saw that was uh, very bold and forward. Uh, the movement way of going, we've discussed that with regard to the canter and canters that uh, actually go forward and cover some ground. Um, the obedience of, uh, of the horse. Um, we've seen that where there was confusion with the small young white pony. Um, suppleness and bending, um, that you can see here uh, with this example. Uh, you see a lot of turns where the horse is actually over the left shoulder uh, and fails to sort of follow the reins and, and bend properly. Um, also seems to be a lot of uh, you know, disruption in the contact in this horse. Um, uh, we've talked about the tempo uh, and their ability to continue to maintain um, a forward tempo in the, in the obstacles and their impulsion, and then um, uh, being able to judge the horse's ability to go on, uh, go on and, be and become a, uh, a future uh, horse for the, for the top level. So with that said, I think we can move on to the next uh, slide, which would take us to the obstacle driving portion of the competition. Just to recap, so the marathon uh, placings, you would receive a score of one through 10. Um, so 10 for the first, uh, eight for the second. Um, and that would be added to your style points, which would be uh, one through 10 again. And you'd have a subtotal that would be divided by two. Um, and then that would be expressed as a percentage score. So the cones phase, the fourth and final phase of the competition, the, the course will um, be made of 15 to 20 cones um, and will be uh, fair and inviting for young horses. Uh, Four-year-old horses will uh, be, uh, their course will be set at 40 centimeters clearance outside the wheel width of their carriage um, and 200 meters a minute uh, will be allowed for a time allowed. Um, just to give you some perspective, 200 meters a minute is a little bit less than a working trot. Uh, Five-year-old horses will be given 30 centimeters clearance outside the wheel width of the carriage and a 220 meters a minute score. So that's um, uh, maybe a working trot. Um, and then six-year-old horses will be required to compete at 20 centimeters at 250 meters a minute. That's similar to the FEI division. And the reason we've uh, elected to do that with six-year-old horses is we feel like this is the championship. Um, and these six-year-olds need to be seven uh, going into their next season and really need to be able to compete um, at the highest level. And uh, we've seen the results from the recent championships, uh, FEI championships in the sport and a horse's suitability for the cones phase um, is ever more important. Um, so we felt like it was important to uh, base our judgment of the best young horse in, um, in the United States on their, as, as they got older, on their ability to be, uh, to be good in cones. Um, multiple obstacles, zigzags and things like that will not be allowed, which certainly will make the time allowed much easier. Um, and then the cones driving, uh, uh, percentage score will turn into 25 percent of the of the overall score similar uh, not unlike um, the last phase and we can start to roll the uh, the video if you guys would like um, 50 percent of the cone score uh, will be scored on course penalties and time penalties the time penalties will be half a second for each accrued uh, half a point for each uh, accrued second in the or part thereof in the obstacle and then three penalties for a knockdown. Um, 
time penalties, um, knockdowns and errors, of course, will be totaled, and the placings will be uh, uh, done as, uh, as follows. So uh, they'll receive 10 points for each double clear round, um, eight points for the second place, whatever that is, um, and then for the third place, they would receive six points, and uh, fourth place, four points, and then if they completed the course two, and if they were eliminated, um, zero. Uh, just to, as a point of clarification for the scoring, uh, if there are two people on, on one of the scores, for example, if two of them have one down, they would both receive eight, eight points, uh, and then if somebody had um, six penalties, which would be two down, plus a little bit of time penalties, they would not receive uh, the fourth place, how ties are usually handled, but they would actually receive the third place finish. So ties won't, won't be handled in a, um, in a manner that, uh, that eliminates the ability to, to receive the third place points. Um, if we can roll this video, you can see, um, I think this is a wonderful opportunity uh, when we uh, speak about the subjective um, elements um, again, that will uh, turn into 50% of the score. You see this horse moving forward, staying on the aids and, uh, and on the rein, continuing to bend um, and look the direction it, it's going. Um, seems to um, not overreact also to the aids. Um, canter is nice. Um, and really suitable when I, when I look at things like the temperament, uh, the movement, the way of going of that horse, um, its uh, ob obedience, um, suppleness and bending, you continue to see it following the reins and, and, and looking the direction it's going. Um, seems to have a nice uh, forward, uh, a nice even tempo and uh, forward impulsion. And uh, I have no, no doubt that this horse uh, if it went to the, the top of the level of the, the, the single sport, it would be a, a suitable good cones horse uh, with the capability of driving clear rounds in, in good courses, even though it just uh, had one down in that course. Um, with that said, I think we can move on to the next example, which is the chestnut horse. So if you watch this, uh, this horse relative to this criteria, the temperament of the horse uh, seems to be okay. I'm not really wild about the fact that its tail is wanting to halfway go over its back. Um, and if you watch its ears, they're often uh, uh, reflect a temperament that could be challenging. Um, with regard to its movement and way of going, it seems to be quite lofty, but doesn't uh, appear to cover a whole lot of ground. Um, the obedience of the horse, with that said, uh, seems to be fine. With that said, uh, the suppleness and the bending, you see as uh, the horse starts to bend, it takes some irregular steps um, behind. Um, so that uh, seems to make me think that there's uh, some connection issues. Uh, the tempo of this horse, um, as I said, I think you'd, you'd have a challenge making some of the faster time allowed. The impulsion seems to be forward and good, which is great. Um, and its potential to excel at the, uh, at the top of the sport um, it actually is a horse that's doing the advanced division now. And the last thing I wanted to mention just as a sideline, uh, you'll notice from this carriage it looks like there's a whole lot going on with it, um, but I think it's important that with the young horses, uh, if people come with a carriage, as long as it's safe, um, to, uh, to allow them to, to come with whatever kind of carriage that they, uh, they, they want to, whether that's a sort of a jog cart or a, a very fancy a carriage that has a lot of technical attributes. For the cones, penalties and placings um, are added to uh, the cones uh, style points. And uh, just to recap here for you, um, they'll receive their, their score based on their uh, ability to reach the time allowed and the knockdowns or penalties incurred. Uh, there will not be multiple elements. Um, and then they'll have a style score based on uh, temperament, movement, obedience, suppleness, tempo, impulsion, and their potential as a horse, those two things will be added. So you'll have a one through 10 score for each of those. They'll be divided in half. Um, and then you'll end up with a uh, score that would be one through 10, and then that will be expressed as a per percentage. Now, onto the uh, very exciting uh, 
news of who will be the uh, Young Horse Championship e champion. Each phase uh, is worth 25%. Um, uh, they must uh, complete all four phases to be eligible for, for an award. Um, the overall winner will be de uh, determined by the um, the sub sum of the combined scores in each of the four phases and then divided by four. The score, the overall score then will be re reported as a percentage and the highest percentage score will win. In the event um, that there's a tie um, for a champion or reserve champion, the, the judge or designated driver um, will uh, break a tie for the champion or the reserve champion. Um, and ties for uh, lower places after um, the champion or reserve champion position um, will, uh, will remain as ties. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name's Judy. Um, are there th specific physical characteristics that you would try to avoid in selection? Are there specific physical characteristics? So are, are you referring to the in-hand evaluation that I would try to avoid? Um, you know, um, I think that in driving, it's important that the horses, uh, I, I like to talk about things in a positive nature. Um, so I think it's important that horses have a straight way of going with their legs. I don't think that uh, uh, in general you want to um, uh, reward horses that paddle or wing and things like that because I just don't think that they're very efficient movers. Um, I think that uh, you've seen many examples here today of horses um, uh, in the dressage portion and the horses that were suitable for the cross country that uh, seem to work in a nice frame. Whether that frame is uh, collected or open seems to be manageable by the driver. Um, so I think that the frame is important. Um, I think certainly as you get up into the higher levels of the sport, it's important uh, for driving horses to have a strong hind end. Therefore, one with a weak hind end would be something I would avoid. Um, I think the walk, even though it's not necessary any longer for the highest levels in the cross country phase, um, I do feel like uh, it's important and it's judged uh, m more and more um, in the higher levels of the test, either with a multiple or their two walks. Uh, so I think it's important that horses are able to step over their front footprint um, to be suitable. Um, but the wonderful opportunity in the carriage driving sport is there are examples from many breeds, whether that's Saddlebred or Morgan, um, Lusitana, Lipidsan, or Andalusian. I've seen wonderful horses that are suitable for our sport um, from those breeds as, uh, as well as uh, the Dutch warm blood, the German warm bloods, and I think that that's something that's very unique and uh, exciting for uh, for the driving sport and for the young horse championship because it gives an opportunity to breeders of many horses. Certainly, there are different breeds that have different opportunities. Uh, when you look at some of the classic breeds like the Andalusian and Lusitano, they're certainly going to have advantages when it comes to some of the collected gates in the frame. Um, and when you look at horses that um, have the um, have sort of a bigger, more thoroughbred like canter, they're going to have some advantages when it comes to the cross country. But I think the 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 interesting thing that's going to be um, uh, a challenge for the judges here, and uh, and it will be the ability for all these horses, as young horses, to meet in one place and uh, and be evaluated um, and and compete against each other. Uh, the qualifying competition uh, will con consist of a dressage pattern followed um, immediately by a cones course set in the same arena. So just to be clear, the, uh, the dressage uh, is not a test, it's a pattern to be executed and there'll be a mark given uh, 1 through 10. Um, that'll be done in a uh, training level or preliminary size arena which is 40 meters by 80. Um, and things that are important to exhibit in the, um, in the dressage portion are their temperament, drivability, trainability, their movement, way of going, um, their obedience, suppleness, which uh, is bending and flexion, their tempo, impulsion, and their potential to excel as a driving horse um, uh, for the international sport. Um, an overall score will be, be awarded 
in this qualification of one to 100, and then again expressed as a percentage. This is a uh, example of the pattern that will go on um, in the dressage test. You can see that there's a, a working trot, halt, salute. There's a serpentine, which should exhibit the bending of the horse. Um, uh, there's a lengthening trot, uh, no collected trot. Um, there's a walk and then a change of rein at the walk, um, a halt for 10 seconds. And then after they're done with this pattern, so to speak, so you're not judged movement by movement, but the pattern, um, it should take uh, eight minutes. It'll, uh, then they'll uh, start on this cones course, which uh, is designed in such a way that it, it will not interfere with the dressage pattern if you're doing that in an accurate manner. Um, and they'll carry on directly to that. Our hope is that this will go on in the afternoon so it'll allow professionals and other drivers who go to a show with a, or an event with a horse to compete at a different level to be able to bring along a young horse uh, and be able to do this. Um, then we've asked uh, after the uh, cross country is over, we're uh, at the organizer's discretion to open three obstacles, keep the paramedics and things like that there. Uh, for an hour and allow people to uh, school young horses and present the obstacles uh, to them as they see fit. So this is a video uh, from the Bundeschampionat last year in Germany. Um, and you'll see um, a, a, a horse that um, you see them come into the ring. The test actually doesn't start uh, till the end of the ring uh, where they salute. Uh, at sea, so I think that they've done a wonderful job at allowing the horses to see a little bit of the ring before the test actually starts. And if you think about some of the um, attributes uh, that we discussed with regard to horses and how that, how that they'll be judged doing this pattern, um, you'll notice that this horse um, as, as you watch him do the pattern, there seems to be some issues with the contact. And um, uh, the way of going, whether uh, certainly he's a, a flat mover who flicks his toes a little bit, but seems to um, be, uh, um, seems to lack the potential to be, to be just clear and honest uh, as a horse that you'd really think about being a, a horse for the international sport. The Germans have worked very hard over the last years to improve um, uh, so that their top young horses are um, horses that, and the ones that are winning are horses that might swish their tail a little bit in the corner, which a horse like this that might uh, be a little bit boring and have a boring way of going. Um, uh, might have the obedience thing down, um, whereas what we're really looking to, uh, to do in the driving sport is uh, not to reward horses like this that uh, go in a mundane sort of boring fashion and have, uh, frankly, don't have the gates uh, or, pot or potentially the necessary type to, to be seen at a big event like Aachen. Everybody loves seeing a nice horse. Um, and to me, this is a wonderful horse. I believe it was the winner of the Bundeschampionat this past year. And um, you can see that this horse has suspension. It's free in the shoulder. Frame seems to absolutely be, uh, you know, with, without question. Has a wonderful uh, neck and sort of presence to it. Um, you'll see here that the horse stands still for a while. The guy certainly takes his time, um, and the horse is not standing still perfectly at the halt, but not doing anything really naughty. Um, this, uh, this for me is a clear uh, example of a young horse doing things that young horses do. Um, and if I had a, uh, a four or five year old that was uh, going around trotting like this, the reins were bouncing well, um, it was uh, covering ground, uh, seems not to be fussed by the environment that it's in. Um, and uh, I see a lot of potential uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in this horse uh, as an FEI horse uh, able to go on to the, to the highest levels of the sport.
Well, thank you guys, um, and uh, uh, thank you for allowing the driving to be a part of uh, the Young Horse Championship, and we have uh, certainly high hopes for our program and uh, what we're able to, um, to how this should, should help us uh, to educate young horses and, and um, instructors of young horses um, at developing horses for the, for the future of the sport um, here in the United States. So thank you.